Assalamu alaikum. We Muslims know that the Quran is the word of God, our creator. But how we should present it to non-Muslims to convince them of its origin is always a concern. In the second half of the previous century, some unusual developments took place, which had a thrilling effect on Muslims, as their deeply embedded faith was showered with fresh water by reinterpretations of some Quranic verses in the context of modern science. Muslims who were suffering from setbacks due to the technological gap with the West didn't dare to bring the Quran to educate them. There is Muslims. no human word prior to modern times that contains statements which were equally in advance of the state of knowledge at the time they appeared and which might be compared to the Quran. A non-Muslim scientist, Dr. Maurice Bukai, who was researching Egyptian mummies, for some reason decided he needed to know what the Quran says about Pharaoh and the preservation of his body. He became immersed in the Quran and its Arabic, which led to his research on the scientific correctness of the Quran. My studies, thanks to God, I was in a position to read the Quran without any preconceived idea. We at the beginning without at all a belief in the fact that the Quran might be the word of God. In 1976, for the first time, in a lecture at the French Academy of Medicine in Paris, the word Quran appeared. He gave lectures on this topic and wrote a book explaining many of the verses of the Quran in the light of modern science. That book was received with enthusiasm among educated Muslims and served as a way to invite non-Muslims towards Islam. This paved the way to different conferences in several Islamic countries where leading scientists from different fields were called to examine scientific verses in the Quran. Some of those scientists were quite impressed and some stayed indifferent but most of them did say something about the Quran's scientific correctness. Allah sent his message to the world, the holy book of Quran. A light to shine for all mankind, a guide to teach us right from wrong. In a relatively few ayah is contained a rather comprehensive description of human development from the time of commingling of the gametes through organogenesis. No such distinct and complete record of human development such as classification, terminology, and description existed previously. In most, if not all, instances, this description antedates by many centuries the recording of the various stages of human embryonic and fetal development recorded in the traditional scientific literature. A few of them accepted Islam. saying those verses had to have been of divine origin. We need research into the history of early Middle Eastern oral traditions to know whether... While others try to explain away the existence of all these scientifically no correct it verses, the, belief that God transmitted through the statements these scientists gave in favor of the Quran were published in the form of a video titled, This is the Truth. The video further energized Muslims, and believers started re-examining the Qur'an themselves to search for more scientifically correct statements. The Qur'an deals with every aspect of knowledge that is related to human beings, as it is a revelation to guide all humans. That knowledge is to help us understand nature and its creator, and to humble us before him.
The history of Islam is full of incidents of believers bringing an aspect of the Qur'an to be examined by unbelievers. This time it was the scientific aspect, as the 20th century is clearly the century of scientific advancement. Recently there has been a wave of atheism. His atheists tried to meet those scientists who had publicly accepted the scientific value of the Qur'an and tried to convince them that what the Qur'an really stated wasn't scientific, but those scientists had been misguided by Muslims through twisted translations of the Qur'an. Videos of these second interviews were released with titles such as Mr. X the Scientist Rejected Qur'anic Scientific Miracles from a newly created YouTube channel, This is the Truth Uncut. About four such videos have been published, interviewing four of those scientists, asking them whether they were really convinced that the Qur'an is the Word of God. But, by the grace of Allah, all embryologists who gave evidence in favor of the Qur'an did not participate in this rejection ceremony. An interview with an embryologist was needed to complete the list of rejection ceremony videos. So the uploader of those videos lately added a video showing that Professor Goringer, who had given evidence in favor of embryology in the Qur'an, wanted to reconfirm whether embryology in the Qur'an wasn't copied from Aristotle. The videos of the rejection ceremonies were all uploaded two years ago, while the statement of Professor Goringer to recheck the Qur'anic embryology was supposed to have been made in January of 2002. Professor Goringer was still alive in February 2014, but no interview has been taken with him. The video was published after his death with the heading of Gerald Goringer, This is the Truth Uncut. First of all, we must consider the political situation of the early part of the century, which was probably a cause of this hesitation. After September 11th, which was blamed on Muslims, a wave of hatred against Islam spread in the West, and many efforts to discredit Islam and Muslims were made. In January 2002, soon after 9-11, an article was published by the Wall Street Journal with the title, Western Scholars Play Key Role in Touting Science of the Qur'an. It referenced one scientist, Joe Lee Simpson, a church-going Presbyterian, who was regretting making statements confirming science in the Qur'an. In that same article, Professor Goringer was said to have asked to confirm that the Qur'anic embryology was not taken from Aristotle. The main presenter of the This is the Truth video, Mr. Zindani, was accused to be a friend of Osama bin Laden, on whom the 9-11 conspiracy was blamed. Naturally, some scientists didn't want to be related to him anymore, as the article in the Wall Street Journal stated. There is another factor which might be a cause of these interviews. Muslims organize debates with Christians, comparing science in the Qur'an and the Bible. And most of these scientists themselves were born Christian, but might not have been practicing. About Professor Goringer's doubts that the embryology in the Qur'an might have been a copy of Aristotle's description, we should know that Aristotle made several mistakes, including describing the menstrual fluid as the primary material which was acted upon by semen to produce an embryo. Aristotle said, The action of the semen of the male in setting the female's secretion in the uterus is similar to that of rennet upon milk. Aristotle also held the belief that males are generated on the left-hand side of the womb and females on the right-hand side. The Qur'an did not borrow these mistakes. Aristotle, while proving the inferiority of women to men, stated that, <laughs> stated that women have fewer teeth than men, thus revealing his ignorance of the fact that men and women have an equal number of teeth. No such ignorance or misconception has ever been shown in the Qur'an. For anyone interested in accepting the truth, this evidence is enough.
So what we find as an end result is that Professor Goringer was impressed by embryology in the Qur'an, but he wanted to reaffirm that it was not taken from Aristotle. I'm sure he must have had access to Aristotelian descriptions of embryology during the last 12 years after he had this doubt. And he was free to change his mind if he was sure about it. But he only expressed doubts and stayed alive for 12 years without taking any further steps. This indicates that he didn't find it necessary to change his opinion. Ultimately, it's not important what individuals say. What is important is reality. The Qur'an stated correct embryological facts, and Aristotle naturally and understandably blundered on the subject. People claiming that the Qur'an borrowed from Aristotle must face the truth, that their blunders are worse than those of Aristotle. And while his blunders were defensible, theirs are not. نور في الظلمات أنسي في خلواتي يا سعدي وهنائي القرآن حياتي نور ملأ القلب ففاض بحب كتاب الله أشرق دربي بالقرآن فشكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب عتم الليل المظلم يروي ظما الروح يجعلنا من اهل الله يطيب به المجروح هو نبراس حياه يرشدنا بهدى القلب ففاض بحب كتاب الله أشرق دربي بالقرآن فشكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب أشرق دربي بالقرآن فشكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب